Tonight, in the name of the Lord, who have joined us, we welcome those on live stream. Also, we we do appreciate your fellowship very much. Mm -hmm. and this will be the 14th installment in this new covenant series, and I have a. deep desire for people to understand. Mm -hmm. I did want to make a, a couple of remarks to begin with here. The new, the old covenant did require the heart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Told him to obey these things with all your heart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God didn't accept routine under the old covenant. Amen. That's what he judged the people for. Mm -hmm. For it to remember this. Mm -hmm. God doesn't change. Yeah. God never has accepted anything that people didn't want to do. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. he has demanded that they want to do it. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. right. That's God's demand. Mm -hmm. That's why we have a new covenant. That's why you have Christ. It's because Jesus, God will not back up. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah. Because you don't want to do your best, it God isn't going to tolerate that. Amen. He doesn't accept that. And so that's why he made this new covenant. So that you would not be that that sort of person. Amen. Mm -hmm. I do want to keep before you too that the new covenant is something God made. Yeah. Uh-huh. I will make a new covenant. In other words, God is so holy and so high above humanity that there has to be some kind of agreement that He's initiated yeah. before you can even look that way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's the way it is. Yeah. You may think you can just run to God just any time you want, you can run. Well, there's a sense in which that's true. There's a sense in which it's not. Mm -hmm. For God to receive you, there has to be somebody in between him and you. That's right. That somebody is Christ. Under the law it was Moses. Mm -hmm. In speaking of the new covenant, we're addressing matters of salvation. The new covenant is inextricably tied to salvation, to being saved. It has to do with being saved. Mm -hmm. That's what the new old covenant had to do with that too. Yes, amen. Yeah. If you do these things, you'll have life. That's right, yeah. yeah. So that had to do with being saved. Uh -huh. God had to demonstrate to man that man's not up to this. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. God requires more yeah. than men can do on their own. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't do just for me to tell you that. That's right, yeah. You've got to find that out by hard experience. Amen. Until you have put yourself into serving God, I'm wasting my time. Mm. Mm. This whole thing begins with the postulate that you really want God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. And of course, then that preaching is to produce that. Amen. <laughs> that sort of thing. Now the a new covenant is something God willed. It's, I will. He says, I, I, I will make a new covenant. I will. Mm -hmm. Now there's a lot of things in Scripture where God or Christ said, I will. And mm -hmm. when, now if you say, I will, we, you know, we hope you try and yeah, all of that, uh -huh. but yeah. we, quite frankly, we don't trust you. Yeah, that's right. And we know you don't trust us. We just don't major up and we say, I will. Yeah. Yeah. Or if you really want to speak like the people do today, I'm going to, you I'm know. Gonna, yeah. We don't believe that kind of thing. See, we lived, I've been lived too long yeah. to, know that any, to put any credence to that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But when God says it, let mm. yeah. me name a few things he has said. I will make. You can't make anything. Create is the idea. Yeah. 
I will put. It's God saying these things. I will destroy. God said that a number of times. I will cause. I will establish. These are things God wills. I'm showing you God. When God says I will, you can bank your life on it. Amen. Amen. The issue comes whether you believe that mm -hmm, or not. Mm -hmm. Again, he said, I will remember. Mm. That's bad news now to, to sinners. That's bad news. Don't think God just said that. I will remember. I will show. I will destroy. I will multiply. How about that? I will give, I will send, I will lead. These are all statements of Scripture. I will lead, I will bring, I will preserve, I will feed, I will heal, I will bless, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. See, all through Scripture, uh -huh. God has said, you've got to come to the point where you think about what I said I will do, Amen. and you've got to get in the position where I'll do it to you. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. If God did not do these things I just mentioned, there's a whole lot more, they would not be done. Uh -huh. There are things only God can do. And He cannot lie and He will not fail to do what He said He's going to do. So when he said, I'll make a new covenant. <laughs> and for hundreds of years it didn't look like He was. Mm -hmm. He first, he first said that during the age of the prophets, seven to eight hundred years before Jesus. Yeah. So for for centuries, many generations, ten, fifteen, twenty generations, mm -hmm. it didn't look like he was going to do what he said. Uh huh. Yeah. But he finally did it. Yeah. Amen. amen. There were some people way back early there, centuries ago, where people believed what God said. They trusted in it. He didn't tell them the date. Mm -hmm. yeah. He didn't tell them when he was going to do it. He didn't tell Abraham, for instance, I'm not, I'm not going to I'm not going to do this for 2,500 years. I mean, he, mm -hmm. <laughs> he didn't tell Abraham that. Mm -hmm. Or 2,000 years. Mm -hmm. He didn't tell Abraham. Yeah. Uh -huh. For what Abraham knew, he knew, well, this is going to be the next thing on his agenda. But it, it wasn't. Mm -hmm. We're not speaking of an ideal here. I will make a new covenant. It's not an ideal. He's not, he's not going to say, I'm going to set some goals before you. Mm -hmm. That's not what this is. It's not what we're talking about here. I'm not going to tell you the way, the way things ought to be. Mm -hmm. That's what the law told you. This is what ought to be. Yeah. When God says, thou shalt not steal, mm -hmm. he didn't mean try not to steal. Yeah, that's right. yeah. Amen. He meant don't steal. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And you were given one chance. Yeah. First time you stole, the agreement was off. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's how holy God is now. If you don't believe that, just ask Adam and Eve. They'll tell you. Yeah. You got one chance. If you if you drop the ball one time, unless someone represents you to God, someone that He favors, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Unless somebody meets God's requirements totally, mm -hmm. and God is willing to accept what He did for you. If that doesn't happen, you don't stand a chance. Mm -hmm. So this new covenant see, is based on somebody other than you yeah. mm -hmm. Amen. Fill, filling the gap. Now the thing we're going to focus on tonight, he says, I, here, this is the new covenant I will make. So he, he spells out what it is. Mm -hmm. I will put my law in their inward parts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As a Jeremiah one. Hebrew says, I'll put it in their minds. Mm -hmm. Now you got to see what a work this is. Nobody but God can do this. Mm -hmm. You can't put anything in anybody's heart. Yeah. That's right. 
you got a little child that's giving you some trouble, try putting something in that little child's heart. You'll soon find out you can't do it. But God can. Amen. Got, or one of your older, maybe you got an older child and you, you wish that you got, got to correct them. You got to get them on the right path. Try putting something in their heart yeah. <laughs> or in their mind. Yeah. You'll find out if this is a rather challenging thing. Mm -hmm. God says, I'm going to do this. I'm going to put my law in their inward parts. Mm -hmm. Now this produces, when this is done, this produces serving God with the mind. This is Romans 7.25, with the mind, with my mind, I myself serve the law of God. Mm -hmm. With my mind. Mm -hmm. When I got a couple of free moments, this is what I think about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you think about? Yeah. This is the new cover. When I write my law, put it in their minds. They think about what I said. They think Amen. about what I require. They mm -hmm. think about what I command. They yes. think about it. Mm. In an extended extended thought. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's put it another way. They can't get it out of their mind. Yeah, exactly. When God puts it in, yeah. they can't get it out. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. It's stated, I will write, I will put my law into their inner parts or into their mind. Let's say it another way. Romans 7, 22. It's a confession someone made that, th that God did this to. He said, I delight in the law of God after the inward man. Yes. That the inward man is the real me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The real me, oh, I delight in the law of God. What does that mean? That means when I hear someone use God's name in vain, it upsets me. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what it means. Mm -hmm. I delight in the law of God after the inner man. That means when someone steals, someone lies, someone commits adultery, someone covets, it upsets me. Because mm -hmm. I delight in the law of God. You may be patient with them, but I'm not. Mm -hmm. See? Why? What? Because I delight. Mm -hmm. I delight in the law of God. Mm -hmm. I like it, but I like and enjoy thinking about what God Said, I, said I'm to do. Amen. I, I like thinking about that. This is, let's look at it another way. I'll, I'll put my law into the inner parts, put it into the mind. It means that you keep the Word of God. You, you keep mm -hmm. yeah, that's right. the Word of God. Mm -hmm. You keep the Word of God so you can do it. That's yeah, how the law says. Right. See, some people think keep the law of God means obey it. That's not what it means. You got to keep it before you obey it. Yeah. You don't forget it. Why? Because yeah. He put it in your mind. See? <laughs> put it in your mind. This directly, this directly relates to living by every word of God. That is, you can, you can maintain a lively connection with God living has to do with there's a response between you and God. Living means when God hear, speaks, you, you, you hear it. Living, see, it has to do with your connection with God, your, your receptive to God. You can't get in a situation where you really forget God. See? You're living by the word of God. God puts his law into your mind and it, it results in you living. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm before Him. It's a preference for the Word of God. You have a preference for it. You have, a, you have an appetite for it. Yeah. You, you yeah. want it. Yes. None of this I forgot today to read the Bible. Yes. <laughs> this is like a TV where we were saying, oh, oh I, I forgot to watch TV today. <laughs> or if you're the bother and say, I forgot to bring my phone. You know? mm. <laughs> <laughs> People don't forget what they want to do. That's right. That's the way it is with the, when God puts His law into your mind. Mm -hmm. It's with you all the time. But wherever Amen. you go, whatever you do, except when you're asleep, you're using your mind deliberately. <clears throat> I'll put it in your mind. And when the law of God has been put into your mind, 
what the law demands is fulfilled in you. Yes. Now Romans 8, 4 says this. After telling us that we're justified by faith and have peace with God and all those marvelous benefits, he says that all this has been done that we would say in order, in order that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. Mm -hmm. The righteousness of the law is the conduct that God requires. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt, mm -hmm. thou shalt not. That's conduct he requires. Yeah. He's not going to take back the Ten Commandments. That's right. So I'm sorry, I'm sorry I made it so tough on you folks. Yeah. It's okay. It, it's okay if you don't measure up. This is, this is not God now. That's right. Mm -hmm. This is not the way God is. This way He's presented. I'm afraid this is the way He's presented. This is the way He is. Mm -hmm. What He does do by putting His law in your heart or in your, in your mind, mm -hmm. He enables you to actually do what He says because when it's in your <clears throat> mind, you prefer it. Amen. Yeah. Uh -huh. You love it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You want to do it. Mm -hmm. See, it mm -hmm. changes the whole complexion of life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But where this law is not written in the mind, because that's a person who's not been born again. If the law of God is not written in the person's mind, and they don't, their thoughts don't gravitate to the law of God, and they don't prefer the law of God. See, they're not born again. It's just that cut and dry and that simple. We have to tell people this, but they can be born again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That status mm -hmm. can be changed. Mm -hmm. Except the man be born again, he can't even see yeah. the kingdom of God, much less enter into it, Jesus said. See? So it's necessary to do this. To a fuller measure, you do by nature what's contained in the law. Now, now Paul said there are some Gentiles that didn't know what the law said. God hadn't made a covenant with them. Gentile is a, is a heathen. It's a non-Jew in scriptural terms. It's a Gentile. But yeah. he said uh, in Romans 2.14, he said there are some Gentiles that do by nature the things contained in the law. They don't murder. It's not because there's a law against murdering. They don't want to murder. They do yes. by nature. Uh -huh. They're yes. saying the law. There's some people, they don't steal. It's not because they know God said don't steal. They don't know, know that, but they just they don't want to steal. They do yeah. it by nature. Yeah. The things contained in the law. There are some Gentile, heathen people, that are afraid to speak against God. Mm. Mm. They wouldn't dream of speaking against God. They're doing by nature the things contained in the law. There's some people, some of your neighbors, wouldn't dream of committing adultery. They would just wouldn't do it. But they don't know God. Yeah. They're doing by nature the things contained in the law. Now they do it sporadically and selectively. But when God writes His law in your heart, you do it all the time. That's Amen. right. Amen. Mm -hmm. Then if you have this thought to steal, it's a temptation. See, there's a difference between an inclination, that, a, a, an inbred inclination that you got, and a temptation. There's a, there's a difference. Satan offers temptation. But temptation for the child of God is Satan trying to get you to do what you don't really want to do. Uh huh. Yeah. 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 Amen. And it relates to fearing the reproach of men. Isaiah fifty-one seven it says, "Hearken unto me, ye that know righteousness, the people in whose heart is my law." Fear ye not the reproach of men, neither be ye afraid of their revilings. So the idea here is, you don't care what others think about you keeping or not keeping the law of God. You, it doesn't make any difference. You don't fear the reproach of men. You, you don't. You're not. You don't draw back at people talking about you because you're 
Have an oddball. Because you really don't want to go the places they go, you don't want to talk the way they talk, you don't want to do the, what they do. Yeah. They don't really believe you when you say you don't really want to do it. <laughs> That's yeah. right. You understand yeah, that, right. don't you? Yeah. That's right. They don't really believe you don't you want go. They just think you're making yourself uh -huh. do this. That's yeah. right. <laughs> mm -hmm. I've told you how I used to sit at some of the meetings, the executive meetings. They always served wine at these meetings. And you had to you had to turn your glass over quick, boy. You sit out at this table, you had to turn over quick. Because someone's coming down there pouring in the yeah. glass. I turned my glass over. So a fellow asked me, he says, uh, Blakely, they always use my black name but my last name when they're reproaching me. Yeah. yeah. When they want to be friendly, they say, give. Uh -huh. Blakely, is drinking against your religion? No. He said it isn't. Why don't you drink? I said, because it's against my nature. Yeah, uh-huh. That's what happens when the law of God's written on your heart. Yeah, amen. And amen. put into your mind. Mm -hmm. Written in your inward parts and put into your mind. That's what happens. Mm -hmm. you amen. Sin actually becomes repugnant to you. That's right. Amen. Now, if you have experienced this, Satan's going to try and get you to act in contradiction of that. But you've got to know that you've, you've got the wherewithal to just say no. Yes, yes amen. I'm, I'm not going to act in contradiction of this law that's in my conscience. Amen. <coughs> now what happened when the law is put into their mind? The, an external law, that is a law that's not in your mind, it's imposed. It's imposed on yeah, you because uh -huh. you don't frankly agree That's with right. it. Uh -huh. So he imposes, he forces it on you. But when it's written in your heart, he, it, that's not the way it is. He doesn't force it on you. Uh -huh. You're willing the day of his power. Now, by way of comparison, the word <coughs> command. From Exodus to Malachi, the word command <coughs> is mentioned 84 times. From Acts to Revelation, it's mentioned eight times. Interesting, isn't it? Yes. See? Yeah. In other words, the law was Im imposed. It was imposed on them. They had to do it. Here's another comparison. Commandments. Commandments. From Exodus to Malachi, 249 times the word commandments is mentioned. From Matthew to Revelation, it's mentioned 51 times. See, it's, <laughs> there's still commandments. Jesus has commandments, God has commandments, but they're not imposed. Mm -hmm. I will write them in their mind. So this doesn't remove the necessity of commandments. It removes the necessity of imposing yeah. mm -hmm. the commandments. When they're written on your heart, they're not abrasive anymore. Amen. 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 It's a joyful recognition of the truth. So the law is a reflection of the nature of God. It's like reverse, like a negative is. It's, it's a reflection of the nature of God. And the objective of writing this law in your heart and in your mind is that you will live out what the law mm -hmm. requires. So the scripture says uh, they will walk in my ways. Mm -hmm. Psalm 89 15 Blessed is the people that know the joyful sound they shall walk O Lord, in the light of thy countenance. Mm -hmm. Not they ought to walk, they shall. Mm -hmm. Ezekiel eleven nineteen. 19. I will give them one heart, I will put a new spirit within you, and I will take the stony heart out of their flesh, and I will give them a heart of the flesh, and they, that they may walk in my statutes, and keep my ordinances, and do them. See there? Amen. That's what happens now when he puts his law into the heart. Yes. Amen. People do what God said. That's right. Yeah. They just don't talk about what they uh -huh. should do. 
They don't invent programs to help Amen. people do what God said. Yeah. They do what God said. Amen. Because he wrote his law mm -hmm. in their hearts. Hosea 11.10, they shall walk after the Lord. He shall roar like a lion. When he shall roar, roar, then the children shall tremble from the west. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just let God say something. He got our ears. Why? Amen. Well, it's written in their hearts. Or in their inward parts. And I will write them in my, in their heart. See, the old law was written in stone. Very appropriate. Couldn't couldn't be modified or anything yeah, like that. It was right. written in stone. Mm -hmm. Now it's written with the spirit of the living God. That's yeah, Second right. Corinthians three. Uh huh. Three. Written with the spirit of the living God. Mm -hmm which can write on the tablets of your heart. Mm -hmm. Amen. Where your preferences are. Mm -hmm. Where your desires yes, are. Yes, that's right. Where what you want uh -huh. is. See? Mm -hmm. He writes them on your heart so you want to do them, you desire them, mm -hmm. you love them, you prefer them. Mm -hmm. you, you, when you find them, it's like finding riches and yes. spoils. See? Yeah. Now this already is talking, and as, as this writing occurs, incidentally, you're changed. Mm -hmm. Second Corinthians 3.3 3 talks about written, the first covenant was written in stone, but the new covenant was written with the Spirit of the living mm -hmm. God. And then the, a little later in that same chapter, he says, and we are changed yeah. from glory into glory mm -hmm. into the image, same yeah. image, even as by the Spirit of our God. Yeah, so, man. as He writes, mm. you're changed. Amen. That's Amen. right. The writing changes That's you. That's right. The writing of law that occurred at Sinai didn't change anybody. That's yeah. right. Yep. Nobody was changed by that writing. Uh -huh. Amen. But this writing we're talking about changes people. Mm. Yeah. It's the new heart. This heart in which the law. I will write my law. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He didn't say, I'll write my promises. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I mean, we've got to say what he said. That's right, yeah. He didn't say, I'm going to write my promises in your heart. Uh -huh, so yeah. I'm going to write my law. That's right, yeah, amen. Because until you're in agreement with God, mm -hmm. you're alienated amen. from him. That's right. To the degree that you don't agree with God, he's your enemy. Mm -hmm. <coughs> no mistake about this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what Jesus is all about is to rectify this situation. Reconcile us to God so we're one with Him, so we mm -hmm. agree with Him, so we are made willing in the day of His power. See, that's what this is all about. Yeah. If that's not happening, then salvation is just bogus. It's not yes. it's fake. It's not real. Mm -hmm. People say they're saved and they're not changed. Somebody's lying. Either they are mm -hmm. or, the God, or God is. One or the other. Yes. This is the new heart. Mm. It's where he writes it on your heart. That's what makes the heart new. Yeah. Mm. Uh huh. The law of God written on it. A new heart also will I give you, he said. Mm -hmm. And a new spirit will I put within you. Yeah. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh, a heart that's malleable. Mm -hmm. It's not so much that it, it can shrink, <laughs> it expands. Yeah. Yeah. That's why it, it expands. Mm -hmm. There's more of God than really you have right now. Mm -hmm. Amen. God desires a fullness, the fullness of God. Yeah. We might be filled with all the fullness of God. Well, that hasn't happened yet. And, and as it happens, the heart grows to accommodate that. Mm -hmm. Fullness. So you don't have a heart that's this that's that's this big and just this parts mm -hmm. occupy. Mm -hmm. This isn't the way it works. However large your heart is, it's filled with the fullness of God. Mm -hmm. Is this big or is this big? Yeah. The idea is to get consciously get the fullness in there. Yes, amen. So believe me when I tell you that God has a lot for you that you don't have yet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And salvation is calculated to make this happen. Yeah. And when he, he puts his law, he puts his law in your inward parts. 
and he writes it mm -hmm. Mm. in your heart. So when it comes to your mind, like you put, comes to the heart, right? Mm -hmm. See, he inscribes it. Amen. It makes you different. Mm -hmm. So that all of a sudden you're you're thinking like God, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you have a deep, profound preference for Him. Having been joined to the Lord, we ex we experience His heart. Now here's a, here's a, the psalmist said this, but he said it prophetically of Christ. But when the law has been written on your on your heart, you will say this in mm -hmm. your measure. Mm -hmm. Psalm 40 verse 6 through 8. Sacrifice and offering thou didst not desire. I mean, you just weren't trying to get something from me. Mine ears hast thou opened. Burn offering and sin offering hast thou not required. Then said I, when I saw this, when I saw this, mm -hmm. then said I, lo, I come, and the volume of the book is written of me. I delight to do thy will, O God. Mm -hmm. Thy law is within my heart. See, now yeah. Jesus, mm -hmm. Jesus said that to the fullest extent possible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But everybody who's in Christ says that to some to to their uh -huh. extent, uh, to however much they've been conformed mm -hmm. to the image of Christ. You say this, and if you, it's good to make a practice of actually saying this verbatim to God. Yeah. You say, Father. I delight to do your will. Yes, amen. Yeah. Your law is written in my heart. Yes. Your conscience will confirm whether you're telling yes. the truth or not. Uh -huh. But it's good to it's good to confess this to God. But this is the work of God. Yes. Amen. And Jesus always told the people what God did to him with him for him. This related to having the mind of Christ. Paul said one occasion, Who hath known the mind of the Lord? That it, who, who figured it out? Who found it? Who discovered it? See, who stumbled on the mind of God? Oh, there it is. So who, nobody. That's right. But we have the mind of Christ. Mm -hmm. Why do you have it? Because God gave it to you. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's right. Because God wrote it. When He wrote in your heart, that's when He was writing. Mm -hmm. He was writing the mind of Christ as well as writing His yes. laws mm -hmm. upon your heart. So you can see the... Uh, the superiority of the New Covenant. <coughs> a, a true New Testament church is a church that's in agreement with God and amen. loves to have it so. Yes, amen. Yeah, amen. <coughs> they don't have to be jerked around by laws and uh -huh, commands. Uh -huh. If they do, they're out of the pathway. See, that's, that's right. why that has to be done. But when the Lord puts his law into your inner parts of your mind and writes them, mm -hmm. writes it into your heart, mm -hmm. when he actually does this, yes. it takes the enmity mm -hmm. between you and him yes. out. Amen. And the only people that do not obey God mm -hmm. are the people that are in disagreement with him. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they say, well, what about me? I, I've stepped out of the way. That's why you did. Yeah, uh -huh. that's right. <laughs> that's why you did. Mm -hmm. Satan drew you. See, Satan right. drew you off. Mm -hmm. Trapped you. Mm. So that you, so you did what you knew you shouldn't do. Yeah, you uh -huh. did it. Yeah. This, this shouldn't be strange talk. Mm -hmm. I hope I'm not just talking about myself. Mm -hmm. I I passed through this. Yeah. And still have to wrestle with it. Amen. Mm -hmm. Doing something that after it was done, I knew. Yes. Boy, it, it doesn't. I'm not talking about like murder. I don't no. accidentally murder somebody. <laughs> or something. Yeah. I didn't mean to go to the neighbor and steal everything in their garage. So it's not that. It's not that sort of thing. But you become ultra sensitive about. Yeah. Yes. About sin and Amen. Amen. That's, That's right. right. That's right. And when it when it bothers you like that, uh -huh. if it will bother you soon enough, you won't uh -huh. do it. Yes, <laughs> right. that's right. But if you do it, then just just admit it. Uh huh. Yeah. It was me, where I sin and did this evil in your sight. Uh huh. I really, I, I'm sorry I did it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you really are. Yeah. Right? Just, yeah. Amen. Really sorry I did it. I I was I was not as alert as I should have been. Mm -hmm. 
I neglected, I neglected your salvation. I quenched the Holy Spirit. I grieved the Holy Spirit. I got too close to the world. Yeah. I got. Just tell them this, because that's actually what happened. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I got too close to the world. Mm -hmm. I got to where it was too easy to hear Satan. I was underneath the tree. Mm -hmm. Where I shouldn't have been. Yeah. What will happen when you do that? God will make it less likely for that to happen again. Yeah. Amen. 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 God will cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Right. He will. He'll make it so it's less likely for that mm -hmm. grievous thing to happen again. Mm -hmm. And pretty soon these begin to kind of uh -huh. pile up. Yes. Amen. And you begin to see it. Yeah. God has dealt graciously with me. He set my feet in alarm. Amen. Amen. And that, that cuts down Satan's yes. efficiency, see. Uh -huh. He's got less to work with. Amen. Well, there certainly is a lot more that can be said on that subject. But the New Covenant, again, is something God mm -hmm. did. He made. He made this happen. Amen. And God be praised that He did. Amen. Brother Robert has our exhortation tonight.